Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to delete the history once more. And we're going to use a command called duplicate special. And we're going to basically make an aggregation of this that's going to look uh, kind of unique because it, we're going to start working with some of the features that, uh, that we've started building. And then we're going to deform it a bit. We're not going to get too much into the deformers, but I just want to go over a couple of different techniques to get some quick results with geometry. So let's go up to edit and go down to duplicate special and open that tab. So we get the duplicate special options here. So we need to specify where we want our pivot to be because it will start that from the uh, pivot position that we specify. So we're going to do instances and we need to specify how much we want it to translate in which axis, whether we want it to rotate, etc., and the number of copies. So I want six copies going in this direction, which is our Z, which would be X, Y, Z here. And I'm going to keep the eight units, and I'm going to go down to the number of copies, specify six, and keep the rest of it the same. Make sure that you're under in, uh, instance. And let's just hit apply and see what happens. Great, so we've made an aggregation that's moving incrementally one unit in the Y and eight units in the Z as it's making a copy, or it's making an instance, I'm sorry. So what's pretty interesting about instancing, and if we go to the top view, you will see, let me close this out. And I'm going to Alt B to change the background color. So I'm going to go down to here and say I wanted this. It's like, well, this looks interesting, but let's let's change this a bit. So let's modify this point, this this position here. What's great about the instance is it actually will instance and it will make all the, the changes uh, happen for every single one of these versions that's been instanced across, which is pretty fantastic. So if we hit three, we can start to get an idea of what that starts to do. You could add a bit of resolution here if you wanted. If we go to insert edge loop tool, and it will actually add it on every single one of these the entire way up. And select those, scale them out if you wanted. You can rotate, rotate them, and it will do it for all of them above. Great, so let's keep that as it is for right now. And let's start to make a few other modifications here. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the perspective. And I'm going to bridge across from these two. But I'm going to scoot them out a little bit first. So I'm just going to select these the entire way across. I'm just going to move that out a little bit. So I'm going to grab this face and this face, and I'm going to go over and bridge. Great. And I am going to also add an edge loop here, but I want to add it at the middle. So I'm going to go to Insert Edge Loop Tool, open the dialog box, multiple edge loops, and just type 1. And I'm going to close that out. Great. So. One of the things that we're going to do now is we're going to just bridge across uh, a few of these and where they're actually going to transition the whole way through. So I'm going to grab this face and maybe this one. And I'm going to hit bridge. I'm going to open the dialog box to put a couple of more divisions. I'm just going to do two. I'm not going to worry about the curve just now. Great. So you see what happened. It created the bridge here. I'm going to grab another one next to it. 
and bridge the corresponding side on the other side and just hit bridge. Great. You can hit three and preview that. And let's do a couple more of these. Maybe this one and this one. here. Let's grab this side and this side. I'll just hit bridge. Just have a little fun with it. Just trying to show a couple of different techniques to get some quick, uh, quick outputs here and explore some of the techniques. Great. So we started bridging across some of these and start getting some kind of interesting transitions here and some some more it looks kind of some kind of like some weaving is starting to take place here and so I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these and I'm gonna delete the history edit delete by type history and I'm gonna duplicate them over so I hit control D and I'm gonna group them and I'm just gonna move these over here great and I'm gonna grab these other guys and I'm gonna group them as well this is first set and this is second set and I'm gonna hide those so I'm gonna go back up to the top view And let's have a look at what we have here. So it's great if you hit three, you'll uh, the history still is still linked. Not the history, but the instancing is still linked here. So what I want to do now is say, okay, well we have this set up. I'm gonna go ahead and and start maybe adding a deformer here to try to get a little bit of more shape and and uh a little bit more changing within each one of these sections. One thing that we'll look at later, uh, further down the line when we start talking about animations is uh, how to transition from one uh, shape into another shape through a sequence uh, and, and have access to those transformations, those uh, morphological changes that we're gonna look at as well. So for now, let's go ahead and just combine this. Let's select these guys and go up to mesh combine. And we're going to go in the hotbox and go to create the formers right here and to lattice. And if you don't see the create the formers, you go to hotbox controls and you can do show all. Create the former lattice. Sorry, let me center the pivot. And then we have the lattice here. So let's look at the lattice, the shape node for the lattice. And you specify here the number of divisions that you want in each one of the, the axes. So for now, I'm going to have just five here, and I'm going to keep three and do five here. And then in the outputs, if you go down to the local influence, if you change if two and four are the values you want to stay within, two will make it a tighter transition based on the point of the the lattice point that it's uh, closest to and then the four will make it a much more gradual transition so if we go ahead and select these lattice points to select the lattice points you hold right click outside of the geometry anywhere near this uh, this lattice here and I'm just going to scale those in Grab these and scale them in. So you can see that right now it's having a lot of local effect here, which I'm going to change that. So I'm going to select the lattice and go down 
to the local influence and highlight those in type 4. So you can see, as I undo and redo, what that starts to do. I'm going to grab some more of the lattice points. Start pulling those in a bit. And I'm going to grab these guys. Maybe pull those out a tiny bit. You can start shifting some of this around if you'd like to make it a bit more tighter in some areas. Great. So, and like I said, we're not going to get too much into the deformers right now. If you delete the deformer, then you're going to delete the changes that you just made. So if you want to get rid of the deformer, you have to delete the history of the polygon, and it will, if we do delete by type in history, we'll delete the the lattice, but still keep the deformation. Or we can control D and duplicate it over, and now this this uh, duplicate will will have the transformations, and the lattice won't be bound to it anymore. Great. So now that we have this part, I'm going to go back to perspective, and I'm going to isolate this, and let's just have a look at what we have. So you can see that this is of course looks very jagged and low resolution. Well earlier we were talking about the difference between 1 and 3. So 3 is going to be that smooth mesh preview. It's not going to be the actual geometry. So if you were to export this as an OBJ or to Rhino or to any other software, you would get the geometry that looks like this. Unless you end up converting it to, uh, or smoothing it or converting the smooth mesh preview to polygon. So like I mentioned, this is just the preview. And I'm going to go ahead and actually convert this over. So I'm going to go back to 1, and I'm going to smooth this. So the last command that we're going to look at is under Mesh, Smooth. And let's open that dialog box. So you have a couple of options here, uh, specifying the division levels and whether or not you want to preserve the borders, uh, the selection borders, hard edges, etc., which will preserve these. By default, when you reset the settings, uh, yours will look like this. So if you uncheck under the preserve tab all three of these, then uh, we will not uh, maintain any of these borders or hard edges. And we want to keep the divisions level division levels to one. Uh, keep in mind that this is exponential, so uh, jacking this value up is is probably for sure going to crash your computer. So let's just keep it at one, and you know you do it one at a time just to kind of see the amount of, of uh, geometry that we have. So I'm just going to apply and hit the smooth. And it's going to think about it for a second. I, this is a little bit more higher res than I wanted right now. But it's fine. So now if you select it, you see that there's a lot of more, there's a lot, a lot more geometry here. And this transition starts to smooth itself out with actual geometry. So if we were to export this out, we would end up with geometry that's actually like this and not a representation and I accidentally hit one more smooth just for fun I don't recommend doing that many uh, this is really really tight here versus here so one of the one of the ways that we could change that would be if I went back we have a lot of resolution in one area versus another so I'm going to undo Keep on doing. Okay, so what we'd want to do here is we'd want to insert a couple of edge loops. And instead of doing it here, I'm going to go ahead and open the dialog box instead of doing one at a time. And I'm just going to do two. I'm going to do a couple here. Because I combine this, I no longer now have uh, the instancing which we had earlier. But if you did it in the in the state with the instancing, then you would have you would only need to do it to one, and it would do it to all of them. So let me just do those two, and then I'll smooth I'll smooth it now, and I'll add another one up here as well, and one on the other side, so we can see just this region. back to 
object mode. Delete by type history. And I'm going to go back and do a mesh smooth. And this will now have a, a bit more geometry here. So you can see the difference between this one and this one. Now keep in mind, this is very, very high resolution for an example. Um, you always primarily want to stay as low res as possible. That's why you always keep a copy of the originals. Uh, so you duplicate them so as you continue working, you have, you have that uh, low resolution model that you can always go back to, like in this case here. So never, never make something high res that you potentially plan on going back and using again because it becomes very, very difficult. So always keep a low resolution copy and and then you're able to kind of test and see the uh, see the amount of resolution you want to add and go back and change things if you need to. Like in this case, we would have needed to change the resolution of these connections here. And there you have it.